just dodged that pred right there. What is going on guys? My name is TKF and I have a quick gameplay here for you. It's a domination game on the map Hard Hat. I believe I was using the Scar L with a specialist class, I believe. Turned out to be a pretty good match. Um, I just really wanted to bring you guys this gameplay so that I could talk over a few things about the game. And um, basically the differences between the playstyle between Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops and Modern Warfare 3. And hopefully give you guys some tips along the way that are going to help you generally do better in Modern Warfare 3. So you can see how I am indeed rocking the Scar L with um, probably Slight Hand Pro, Quick Draw Pro and uh, Marksman Pro. And as I unlock my uh, Specialist Pro too, see I'm running Quick Draw. And uh, you guys will see what other products I'm running, there's uh, Slight Hand. But um, that's pretty much what this gameplay is going to be about. So, like I said, it is on the map Hard Hat and it is Domination. So basically, you, when you start a Domination match, you pretty much just want to kind of find out what flags that you want to keep and what flags provide the best cover spots. Now, as you can see here, um, we're on the A flag and just up to my right there is a very, very nice spot that you can look over at. And you'll see me going back to it a lot in this gameplay. And um, for those of you guys who don't know a lot about me, I like to rush a lot. I'm a very heavy rusher. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. That's just the way of the game. But um, this time, I'm going to be playing very, very differently. I'm going to be playing a way more defensive style. And you guys are going to see the benefits and the drawbacks of playing in a defensive style in Modern Warfare 3. So, mainly, I'd like to say that Modern Warfare 3 is a step down from Modern Warfare 2 in the sense that it's harder to rush. It's, it's a lot harder to rush in this game. Obviously, it's possible. It's still possible. If you're a great player, you'll still be able to navigate the maps well, you know, predict spawns, and be able to do all of that good stuff. But... For the most part, to the average player, this game is not as rush orientated as Modern Warfare 2. So, basically, you need to play a little bit slower, give it a little bit more thought. And one of the biggest reasons for this is predicting spawns is now very, very hard. And the reason for that being is that they have this whole revenge spawning system in place. And that means that when you kill somebody, the the game will try and spawn them as close to you as possible, to the closest spawn point where it's not ridiculous and you know sometimes there have been a few videos Hutch put one out, I put one out where the spawns are ridiculous where people will literally spawn behind you and kill you as soon as you finish watching the kill cam that doesn't happen very often but it's a good example of what the revenge spawn system can do so you want to be on your toes with that one and that's pretty much why domination has become so difficult because normally in the sense that if you have the A and the, C and A A A A and the B flag they're typically going to spawn at the C flag and that's not really the rule of thumb in Modern Warfare 3. They will spawn pretty much wherever they like. And here is a perfect example of me and how I do well with the specialist class. I get up to the maximum you can get, unlock all of the perks, which for me is a 7 kill streak because I have hardline. So um, I always die. As soon as I get all of the specialist perks and I get all the specialist bonuses, I die straight away. I really don't know why and I really wish I knew why. But um, that's for another time. But, like I was saying, you pretty much need to be very cautious of the spawns, and they're very unpredictable in this game. So basically that means you could be rushing, and somebody has spawned directly behind you and kill you, and it's not your fault. So, with that in mind, defensive playstyle for me seems to be the better option in this game. And it can seem very, very frustrating when you're playing defensively, and you can go you know, anything up to 30 seconds without getting a kill, and then you get killed, and it makes you think, why did I bother doing that? Why didn't I just go and rush? But I promise you guys, being very, very, very defensive in this game can really help you out. And as you can see here, it's not like I'm camping. I am going out, getting kills, navigating the map, making sure that I'm taking out enemies, helping my team, keeping cl uh, flags clear. That's pretty much what I'm trying to do. And you can see that I am pretty offensive about it. And the reason being is because domination is all about, obviously, having those flags and keeping the opponents off the flags and doing as much damage as you can. So, this brings me on to my next point about how there's two different types of uh, players. And I mean generally there's two different types. There's Slayers and Objective Players. Now, the way they work together is that Objective Players are going to go out and try and cap flags and keep enemies off the flags. But, for the most part, they're going to be trying to cap flags. And Slayers will go around, try and pick off the enemy team, keep them away from the flags. It gives the Objective Players less to do. And it basically means they can go out and hold the team back and help you out as well. And that's pretty much how you get a good balance in a Call of Duty game. And most of the time, if you have a good balance between objective players and slayers, then you will take the victory at the end of the match. You know, depending on skill levels within the lobby. So, pretty much, I would have considered myself a slayer in Black Ops, a slayer in Modern Warfare 2. But in this game, strangely enough, I've gone to an objective player. And I know I, this really isn't a good example of me being an objective player in this game, since it does look like I'm slaying a lot. Just dodge that pred right there. But 
what I'm actually doing is trying to keep the enemy off the flags and I'm trying to pin them off at this A flag right here because I know my team are adamant they keep trying to come back to cap this flag and I'm trying to give it as much cover as possible. Here you see me picking up all of my perks again. And, uh, it really is quite strange when you pick up Stalker. If you don't run Stalker initially, it, it's really strange when you get it. But um, here you can see me putting pressure on this A flag again. Really just trying to keep people off of it. Just so that my team can push forward. And as you can see, we do have two flags at the moment. So I'm not really too worried about our team pushing up for A. It's a nice place for us to kind of hold off. And this is the really nice bit of cover that I was talking about. Unfortunately, I just managed to get picked off here. Which is, like I said, really unfortunate. But this is pretty much what I want. The whole point of the video was about power positions. Now, they said they were going to reduce power positions or completely get rid of them. Which, as we know, is pretty much impossible. But... They said that they were going to reduce the power positions, and have they? Eh, I don't know. Possibly. There are a lot of power positions in Modern Warfare 3. I'm not really sure how many there are that we may not know in Black Ops. I mean, a lot of us have played that game long enough now to know most of them, so... But in this game, you pretty much just want to find a power position. I consider what I was just in a great power position. I'm overlooking A. It's just a very, very short walk over to the B flag. I can cover both of those flags and make sure that our team holds them and... Uh, that is going to lead to the win. If we have two flags, I'm guaranteed that win unless they triple cap, which they're not going to do if i got two flags. So holding flags is just as important as capping them. But that's pretty much what I like to do these days. I like to walk around, defend flags, and you guys would be surprised at just how well you can do just by guarding these flags and um, helping your team out. I really find that this game rewards the objective player a lot more than it does the Slayer. True, there are a lot of very high kill streaks that are quite powerful, such as the Osprey Gunner, you know, all of that good stuff. The Reaper is really good for a 9 kill streak or a point streak, and I, I don't know how I missed that guy right there, completely oblivious. But the Reaper is pretty powerful, the AC-130 is powerful on certain maps, you know, like Dome is probably not the best map for it, but... There are certain maps that do benefit certain kill streaks, of course, and those kill streaks are okay, but to be honest, I don't see the point in running them when you could run support. I mean, obviously, now as most of you guys will know, kill streaks are not going to reset in this game anymore if you're running the support uh, strike package, so you can run the UAV, and it, you know, typically, when you're playing an assault strike package, it's a three-point streak to get a UAV, and it's a four-point streak in the support strike package, so... It really doesn't make that much of a difference, it's one kill, but the biggest difference here is that you can die and still get your point streaks, that's the biggest thing. And don't forget, not only am I going to get a point streak rewarded for killing somebody, I'm also going to get one for capping a flag, so... If I can run around and put up UAVs, advanced UAVs, SAM turrets, you know, um, Osprey Gunner guarded care packages, stealth bombers, all of this great stuff is right at your fingertips and you no longer have to stay alive to do it. So if you feel that you're really not the best ability based player and that you often die a lot but you feel like you're a good asset to the team, run and support is an absolutely amazing way to help out your team, get a load of points and do well in almost every match. And I really want to stress this to you guys that yeah, assault and slaying is really good if you're that kind of player where you can go out and do that successfully every single game. And bring in those kill streaks and help your team out. I advise you do that, and I advise you carry on playing how you play. If you feel that you know you run the kill streaks, you don't always get them. Sometimes you find yourself having a bad game, and sometimes you know this could cause the team to lose. Not really saying that losing is your fault, but sometimes you know you could be hindering your team more than doing them good. And if you feel that's the case, it, all you got to do is change class. Just have one support class there, and if you feel that it's not your day. You can switch over to that class and you can start proceeding to do what I'm doing right here, which is just helping my team out as much as possible. And I do really, really well in this game. I end up coming out with a 4 KD, which is obviously, if you're a KD oriented player, that's great news for you. Personally, I'm not. I would like my KD to be above average, but you know, I'm not going to complain and dashboard if it's below average for a few games. That's just not me. I find that typically I generally do well most of the time. And the reason for that being is because I pick a good class and a good strike package according to what map I'm playing. Now, normally I will go out and slay, like I said, but in Modern Warfare 3 I am more of a defensive, support-oriented player, so I will go out and do this for most of my matches because I know it will do well, but for a good example, if I'm playing on mission, that will be a very good opportunity for me to pull out the assault packages. I like to run the dual FMGs. I know they are overpowered, but I like to run that in conjunction with the Spaz-12, with the range and the extended mags, and that works out superbly. You can go around, you can get your killstreaks very easily, Get your Predator, uh, predator Missile, that will lead to your Reaper. Reaper will lead to AC-130. It can generate a very high kill game. And for me, I just feel like Mission is a very good map for me to go out and do essentially what I do best. So it just brings back that Modern Warfare 2 rush aspect of the game, which is very nice. 
So I recommend that you guys, you know, try try making your classes specific to the maps that you're playing on. It really does make a huge difference. For example, for me, I wouldn't necessarily snipe on mission, even though I'm a big fan of sniping, just because mission is probably not the best suited map for it. So for me, it is probably a very good thing that I don't do that. So, you know, it's just picking your class. Like, this map, for example, would be decent for sniping, although there is a lot of close quarter engagements, so it's probably best to run the assault rifle on this map. Seen as assault rifles can deal with, you know, hip fire and they can deal with uh, medium to long range. But that is it for the gameplay, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary. Hopefully I've shed some light on some things for you and hopefully you'll take to heart what I've said and hopefully it will help you improve. Thanks for watching, guys. My name is TKF and I'll catch you guys later. Deuces.